Hi there, it's Louise Harrington here from Performance Accountancy and the purpose of this video is just to give a few hints and tips for the self-employed wanting to get a mortgage, what hoops you need to jump through and what kind of information you need to present. So a bit of a boring statistic first, but by the end of 2019, the Office of National Statistics showed that there were more than 5 million people that were classed as self-employed. And this is up from 3.2 million people in the year 2000. And the number of self-employed people that are either self-employed in the terms of sole trader or as a partner or as a director of their own limited company, but they represent 15.3% of total employment throughout the UK. So that's quite a large chunk of people. Well, obviously, as I said, five million. So why is it a pain in the bum to get a mortgage for self-employed people? It mainly stems from the mortgage companies being a bit more nervous about the income stream of the self-employed. So it might fluctuate month to month. It might fluctuate year to year. Um, so basically, they really want to get much more evidence of what your income is in order to support any mortgage applications. So these are the types of information you may get asked for going for a mortgage. So they would like to have two, maybe three years of accounts, ideally certified by an accountant. They prefer chartered accountants or certified accountants, not these management accountants, no, no, no. So chartered or a certified accountant to sign off your annual accounts and those annual accounts are what are used for <coughs> excuse me your tax return they then would like the sa302 and a tax year overview for the corresponding years so the last two or three years what is an sa302 well that's the calculation you get out of the hmrc system or if you use an accountant and they use commercial software, it's the tax calculation that comes from their software. There is a separate video in the knowledge base on how to get hold of your SA302. Depending on the industry you're in, they might want a possible projection of your income. And that could be a case of looking at any up and coming contracts or work you know you've definitely secured or carried on before you next to your tax return. Now, for musicians and singers, potentially you get these contracts quite a way in advance. So you'll have a reasonable idea of what money might be coming in. They also require some form of identity documents and it's always at least one with a photo on it and one with your address on it. So with a photo, it would be things like a passport or a driving license or something with an address on, it's probably a council tax bill or utility bill, bank statements. Credit card statements are now not really in vogue. So a lot of the times now they won't take credit card statements. Now, who gets a utility bill now? I think most of it's online, but there are options with some utility companies that if you click a button to say you need a bill for referencing purposes, they will actually print an invoice and post it to you. And some mortgage brokers require three to six months worth of bank statements. It could be business bank statements. It could be personal bank statements. So if they are two different bank accounts, which I hope they are, then you might have to provide two different bank account statements. OK. The next thing that they will actually do is they will look at whether you can afford the mortgage. It's all very well saying you've got some lovely accounts, et cetera, et cetera, but you might have really high personal expenditure. So they'll look at things like, OK, so what does it cost to run your household? Um, obviously, it'll be different if you get a mortgage because then you won't be paying rent or you might remortgage for a lower mortgage cost, so that will vary. But things like you know, your utility bills, other household bills like council tax, insurance. If you go out socialising, well, that would be new, wouldn't it? If you have hobbies, go on holiday, childcare, any travel you might want to do, um, even just to get into an employed job, 
You know? And yes, you can have a mortgage as a self-employed person as well as having an employed job. It just makes the form a bit more complicated. So I'll look at what you currently spend your money on and see what's left over as to whether you can afford the mortgage. Now, the job of an accountant is to help you reduce legally your tax bill. So what you'll find is that your accountant will put through all the costs of your business because then it will lower your, your profitability and lower the income tax. But that might not be a good move if you're getting a mortgage because a lower profit means less for the multiple to happen uh, in order to substantiate your mortgage. So when you do start to think about mortgages, think about it a year or two before you plan to get one and then start to look at, OK, if I don't claim all my expenses, then what the, would the tax bill be and what would it give me for a mortgage multiple? Uh, now, what they look at, the mortgage company looks at, they look at if you do have any PAYE, they'll look at your PAYE income. But if it's such a tiny amount, they'll just discount that. They will look at your self-employed profit before any taxes are taken off. So that would be your fee income or your turnover, less your allowable expenses and less your capital allowances. So if you've gone and spent lots of money on capital equipment, then you'll do your capital allowance going through either at 100% if you can as a first year allowance or at 18% or 6% going through. So, so it's always the figure that's on the tax return and that will be self-employed profit. Now, one thing to point out is that lenders criteria can different can differ between lender A and lender B. So I would always check the eligibility for whichever mortgage company you're looking at, because they might have different terms and they might take different things into account when getting your mortgage. So just because you might get turned down by one mortgage company doesn't necessarily you will get turned by turned down by all mortgage companies. So just a quick word on if you operate through your own limited company, technically you're not self-employed because you are employed by your company. And of course, you do have a payroll scheme going through, don't you? That's subject to a different video. We won't go into that now. So the lender will take into account the salary you pay yourself, even if it's just the minimal salary. Um, dividends that you have paid yourself and as to whether those di dividends have a sustainability factor. And some lenders will also take into account the profits held in the company if you don't take all the dividends. That is something you might want to check with a mortgage broker first as to which, which companies do take into account your profitability and retained profits in the company. You don't particularly want to pay yourself a £50,000 dividend if you don't need to, if you don't need the money and you'll be paying income tax on it in your personal tax return if they will take the profitability into account of your limited company. So always check that. Now, there are ways, obviously, uh, that COVID has come and bit people. Um, so lenders are tightening up on their criteria and it can be harder to secure a mortgage as a self-employed person. What I have experienced when I've done some forms for mortgage brokers for my clients, they have often been turned down by the mortgage broker because they took the SEISS grant. So check out whether that is a criteria in one of their lending um, briefs. It is looked on by a case by case process. It might be a case of you have enough self-employed income before the SEISS grant for them to be satisfied that actually, you know, this is a good risk. We can offer this person a mortgage. Um, again, a mortgage broker should or hopefully would know which lenders are turning down people so not to sort of waste time and money going through to them. 
Now, there are ways you can improve your chances of getting, getting a mortgage, which always helps. Um, make sure you have your numbers ready. Um, make sure you've got up-to-date numbers. Now, often people won't look at anything that's more than 18 months old. So don't leave your tax return to the last minute in January, because then that can really put off uh, mortgage brokers and and mortgage companies from actually treating you seriously in wanting to get a mortgage. So get your numbers ready, get your tax return filed, um, especially if it shows an increase in profit, and also have ready what your current year income is and what your expenses are. So if they asked you for a projection, you've actually got it there and there waiting. You can work on improving your credit score. I'm not a credit score expert. You'll have to search how you can do that. Potentially you can save for a bigger deposit, which will then mean that you're not having a 100% mortgage or a 95% mortgage or even a 90% mortgage. If you've got a bigger deposit, then that will always help the eligibility and what people are willing to um, lend you. I've put again, employ the services of a specialist broker. Some um, brokers, actually specialize in a certain niche industry. They might know of the best um, mortgage companies to get self-employed mortgages from, but it would be a really good idea if you got a broker, especially if you are newly self-employed because you have no real credit history. You might have PAYE income and then only one year of self-employment. And also get yourself an accountant to certify the accounts in advance. You might even think about a couple of years before you want to have a mortgage, getting an accountant to do your tax return. They've got the data there and they can certify it. Yes, accountants can go back, certify prior years by looking through your tax return, looking through your backup information, etc. But if they find there are problems within that tax return, it's already been filed and potentially there's nothing they can do about it. So you might be claiming expenses you shouldn't be claiming for, et cetera, or you might decide, actually, I don't really want to claim for those expenses. It's a bit in a gray area, so let's take them out. But the tax return's already been filed. So yes, you can go in and open it up to a year later and refile it, but sometimes it raises a red flag with HMRC. So use an accountant to certify them either before and get them correct before it goes into HMRC or an employee and accountant to review everything in order to certify the accounts when you're ready. I'm not a broker. I'm not a financial advisor. So this is just from an accountant's perspective. Any problems, feel free to give us a bell or drop us an email. OK, have fun. Thanks. Bye.